Hey everybody, Joe Joseph here for TheDailySheeple.com, and this is your new shot. SHTFplan.com asks a very important question, considering where we are in these United States of America. They ask, what would happen to the world if the Yellowstone supervolcano erupted right now? That's a very interesting question, considering how even NASA is getting involved in diverting this looming threat, if you will, of a possible eruption at the Yellowstone supervolcano. Some preppers have wondered exactly how to prepare for such a cataclysmic event. So, here's what would happen. So, Yellowstone supervolcano is essentially a giant lid-top cauldron, and it's so vast that it can only be seen from low Earth orbit. Its crater is 45 miles all you people in the UK, that's 72 kilometers. And its underlying uh, plumbing contains several tens of thousands of cubic kilometers of magmatic material. But if it were to erupt right now, we would have a very, really virtually no time to even know that it was happening. IFL Science spoke to one of the country's most respected volcanologists to get the most up-to-date and low-down information on the future of the world's most famous supervolcano. And according to the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory scientist in charge, Dr. Michael Poland, the supervolcano may not have enough energy at present to produce a super eruption. He says right now much of Yellowstone's magna is partly solidified and you need a lot of magma to feed a large eruption. The chances of a super volcanic uh, paroxysm are... Currently, one in 730,000, which makes it much likely than, um, much less likely than a catastrophic asteroid impact. That's a very interesting way of looking at it. We're much more at risk of having an asteroid impact affect humanity than we are with Yellowstone erupting. Now, a sudden injection of new magma from behind, uh, beneath the caldera or a sudden weakening of the geological layers encasing it. Um, may be enough to trigger a sudden depressurization, depressurization event and the entire system would violently expunge onto the surface and up into the atmosphere. And what would happen next, of course, is speculative, but it may be important to understand just how dire that could be. So shortly before this hypothetical eruption takes place, right, the ground around Yellowstone would rise somewhat. Something that it's already doing um, and that's why I think they've put so much test equipment and expertise out there to monitor it because it has done that here recently. Hydrothermal systems, including the geysers and geothermic pools, would rapidly heat to temperatures above boiling and they'd likely become extreme, extremely acidic, uh, more so than usual. A swarm of earthquakes would be detected, making their way towards a central point, indicating magma rising rapidly through the crust. Then... The, ro the roof rock would fail and the eruption would begin. A vast column of ash and lava would shoot upward to a height of around 16 miles or 25 kilometers. That's huge. Sustained by both raw explosive energy and the release of heat through cooling lava uh, bleeps and bombs, it would sustain itself for days, pumping ash into, jet stream, into the jet stream that would transport around the stratosphere. And when the eruption column or parts of the column fail, enormous pyroclastic flows would blast their way across the park. So immediately, anyone within the park itself, of course, would perish. And that's roughly 11,000 on average, depending on the time of year. The air would heat up to around 570 degrees Fahrenheit. So just to consider, it would be hotter than the broil setting on your oven. Okay, so that's bad. And it would kill everybody within seconds. Uh, the pyroclastic flows in the ash deposits as they settle and cool may seem harmless at first, but really they're not because if it rains heavily after the eruption, especially on the slopes, then it mixes with mud and then it turns into rapidly moving uh, cement-like slurry flows. And that's crazy because if you get stuck in one, there's a good chance you're not going to make out of it a lot, make it out alive. These things end up um, solidifying fast. And like it said, in almost like rock. Because think about it, that's what molten lava is, is just liquid rock. But the most dangerous aspect would be the effect of the fallout on the globe. 
Because if you breathe in the ash fallout, it lacerates your lungs and forms like a glassy cement. It's also about six times denser than water, which means plenty of architecture would collapse under its weight as it accumulates on the rooftops. Uh, Dr. Poland even points out that even a few tens of centimeters of wet ash could cause weak buildings to buckle. Roads and sewer systems would clog and break down. Water supplies would become contaminated and electrical grids would short out. Millions of homes would become uninhabitable and those in Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana would be at highest risk for this. The amount of fallout in ash could be up to 10 feet in areas near Yellowstone, but it would spread across the entire continental United States and large parts of Canada. A fine layer of volcanic ash would make its way to Miami, New York, and Toronto within a few days, but it would still be large enough to cause vehicles to break down and water to become unpotable. The ash injection into the stratosphere would cause the skies to darken and a regional cool would take place, if not planet-wide. And if the eruption in particular is sulfur-rich, which is efficient at blocking sunlight, then you could see global temperatures plunge and we could be plunged into an ice age. So these are the things that could happen should Yellowstone or another supervolcano take place. But we'll use Yellowstone as an, as an example. So if you live around the area itself, within a three-state area of Yellowstone, you're basically a goner. After that, the farther away you are, the more um, your chances of, of survival increase. But then, you know, now you have the environmental impact to, dam to deal with and the damage incurred from that. Are you able to grow food? Are you able to get potable water? These are all things I think, especially those that are preppers, know to prepare for and to um, always make plans to hightail it if you do live around that area as the survival rate is virtually zero. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's news shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at thedailysheeple.com. Hashtag wake the flock up. Have a great day, everybody.